Hi, Aaron. Uh, first off, congratulations on reaching 350 subscribers and a belated happy birthday to you. I hope you had a good one. Secondly, I uh, want to thank you because your question for this video got the little gray cells going. I um, was just going to wait for the responses and enjoy them, but the more I thought about your question, uh, the more it nudged me to actually get off my fat butt and try and get my webcam working and put a video response up for the first time in years. Um, so in response to your question about uh, what makes me dream or what uh, was uh, something that spurred on my imagination, um, since I am lucky enough to be an old fart who's past the half century mark, I had a childhood that was filled with wonderful things like Saturday morning cartoons, um, drive in movies, uh, comic books that were cheap enough to buy with my pocket change, and stories that I actually wanted to read. Um, Toys that I, you know, couldn't wait to rip open and play with and never gave a bit of consideration about keeping them intact or pristine for 40 years later when I could use the money selling them on uh, eBay, which I couldn't have even conceived of when I was a kid. Uh, but all those things were, were part of the mix. But I'd say there's two major influences that really... Um, got my imagination going and made me the person that I am today. Uh, the first, well, both of them were uncles. Uh, they weren't related to me. I never met either of them, but um, they were uncles in the loosest uh, definition of the word. word. Uh, the first one was Walt Disney. Um, everything about my childhood uh, you know the movies books games I was given uh, and Uncle Walt on the TV uh, once a week introducing the show long after he had uh, left the planet uh, was a part of my childhood uh, that really influenced me and uh, to this day has an effect on me that I, I treasure both the animated and live features I mean they're still giving today as far as new inspiration new ideas um, sadly also recycled garbage but um, his uh, imagination his industry his um, just go for it attitude uh, was something that's really affected me. The other person um, was someone whose kingdom was not, not quite as grand as, as Walt Disney's, um, but in his own way he had a major influence on a very select group of people, me included, that uh, set my life on a course at a very early stage and um, has um, pretty much defined who I was throughout a big chunk of my life. And that person was Forrest J. Ackerman. And um, for those who don't know, he was a um, literary agent, a writer, a uh, fan, number one fan, number one memorabilia, entertainment memorabilia collector, um, he coined the phrase sci-fi, and for me, what uh, uh, most influenced me was he was an editor of a magazine that is my choice for the thing that defined uh, who I've become. Um, my earliest copies don't have covers. Um, they've been read and shredded, redded and shredded. Uh, but the magazine was Famous Monsters of Film One. 
and anybody over a certain age will know this magazine. Um, in an age before, you know, widespread cable, um, the slew of magazines and websites and blogs and videos that we have today, this was the source for finding out about horror and sci-fi films. And for a kid of maybe seven or eight, when I found my first copy, uh, beckoning to me on the newsstand, um, it was a revelation. And I think what really affected me was uh, twofold. One was uh, the imaginary aspects as far as the, the monsters weren't the monsters of Disney or comic books. They were um, the, the undead like Dracula or the tortured scientists like Dr. Jekyll and his dark side, Mr. Hyde, or the um, put upon Frankenstein creature, the cursed Larry Talbot as the Wolfman. A lot of it was the universal uh, classics, but uh, they were monsters that just fueled my imagination. And there are movies that weren't readily available then. Um, I think we get too jaded today that you can just, you know, go to Netflix or buy a DVD or a Blu-ray or, or even search YouTube. In those days, finding out that there were these films that I didn't know about um, became very important because you had to really look for them. You had a few uh, stations in your town if you were lucky. I lived in a town for a year that had one TV channel. Um, it's probably the healthiest year of my life because I was out and about a lot more. But um, the other thing that the, the magazine gave me was as well as spring my imagination to the fantasy, to the sci-fi, to the horror, it showed me the world of filmmaking and that there were people who actually created these things, artists, um, actors, um, directors, writers, uh, which opened a whole new world too. Um, when I started, oh, that person made this, and then I'd spot a movie, and you'd get to the point where Sunday mornings was a big deal because you'd grab the mornings, uh, Sunday morning paper, grab the TV section, and you'd go through the whole week, and you'd circle the movies you were going to watch for that week, and they'd conflict, and you'd have to pick which you were going to watch uh, because it may not come on again for years. And so um, it became an exciting thing for me. Um, I was very blessed to have a father. I don't know. I know a lot of parents are not were not thrilled with their kids being uh, what we call today monster kids. I had a father who was a minister, and if it made me happy, um, it made him happy. So he bought me my first subscription to Famous Monsters. Um, that moved along to another revelation for me that in the back of the magazine there was always books and masks and all kinds of things you can order. So I knew there were books out there. And one day I came across a book and you could tell I have a pristine copy somewhere with the cover and everything I bought. But of course I couldn't lay my hands on it. Um, but this is called just uh, A Pictorial History of Horror Movies by a gentleman by the name of Dennis Gifford. And this book, along with Famous Monsters, was the basis of my beginning education as far as movies I had to hunt down, how they were made, who was in them, the who's who, uh, not just the actors, like, you know, the Cheneys, Karloff, Lugosi, Laurie, they all became, you know, familiar names, but Jack Pierce and Dick Smith as makeup artists and Harryhausen as a special effects and Willis O'Brien. And just the idea that people were creating like that um, became an obsession with me. I, I had already doodled a lot and these became my themes, science fiction, monsters and that, that uh, for the most of my childhood. Um, some of my writing um, it branched out to, uh, there were 
in the fan section or letter section, people would be talking about the movies they made. And one summer, I got the chance to go to a summer program where I got to make eight millimeter films. And of course, I had to make my grand horror epic. Um, uh, when I was too old to trick or treat, uh, the next logical step was I, I started making haunts in my backyard. And even my mother, who was not as, as enthusiastic as my dad, um, supported me and, and would help out some. It would make every neighborhood kid go through the haunt if they wanted their candy. Um, I remember we moved to a small town in Wisconsin called Rhinelander when I was nine. And I got to go to my first horror movie alone. It was Halloween. And I and my friends went and they had costumes. We all got to make up. And they had candy in the event. And then they showed a movie. And for years I didn't know what the movie was, but it was a vampire film. And I don't know what my parents were thinking. I, I, I'm sure we talked them into it. We were big. We could handle it. We were nine, eight, seven years old. And it's a small town. But there were vampires behind every tree and in every shadow for 10 blocks. And uh, it took me years to find out that the movie was Count Yorga Vampire, which is not a particularly good movie. But when you're nine, um, it, it has its effects on you. Um, the thing that, that Famous Monsters gave me and, and Forey Ackerman, uh, Uncle Forey, um, was a whole new range of possibilities as far as, you know, um, there was something outside of the Disney villains or the superhero villains that I was seeing. There was characters with depth and pathos and there were evil characters. But even they sometimes had a depth to them for a reason they were doing them. And there were just really tortured souls. And it, that part of my, my imagination just really was affected by that. But equally was, you know, learning about horror films, learning about uh, getting to see our first movie horror host. And I think I was 11 or 12, um, Dr. Paul Bearer, and getting to catch all these universal films that I had been reading about for years. Um, and around that time, when I was 10, we moved to St. Paul. And my dad, again, um, he would pledge every year at, uh, for PBS. And one year he pledged a specific amount just so I could get this book, the movies. And then it, this again became, it, it branched out from just horror movies at that point to movies took over my thinking, my everything. T movies and TV and entertainment, um, were a major part. There's points in my, point in my life where I literally had hundreds of uh, movie books, biographies, um, magazines. Um, I've had a downsize since then. I've moved four times in the last five years, and uh, due to health, I'm now living in a uh, handicap accessible apartment building that they already think I have too much stuff. This is just what they let me keep in, in the bedroom, and the DVDs and stuff that I still own are out in the living room. Um, but your question just brought back, I had sort of forgotten how much it had, has meant to me throughout my life. I've, I've, I've been throwing myself a pity party for a while now. And as I thought about your question, and it just kept niggling into my mind, I just felt the need to um, thank you for for giving me something to chew on and think about and to share my uh, my experience with you and uh, and your 350 subscribers and I'm sure it'll be much more soon so congratulations again and uh, thanks take care